Welcome to my tutorial on dynamic blocks. You may have come across dynamic blocks before. These are blocks which have various modification commands built into them. And I've got a few examples here. This shower, for example, an architectural block. If I click on it, you'll notice that there, in addition to the base point here, are some additional grips and arrows. This one here allows me to stretch the block for its width. This one for length. And there are also these flip arrows over here, which allow me to flip it left and right or up and down. I've also got this tree over here, which has both scaling and rotating built into it. So I can scale this tree up and down very easily or rotate it. So in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how to embed these modification commands into a block in order to make it dynamic. It's by no means an exhaustive tutorial. It's an introduction, but it should give you enough tools to be able to proceed yourself and to explore this a bit further. I'm going to start off with this block of a sink, which I have. I click on it. You can see it's been made into a block already. I'll right-click and open up the block editor. Inside the block editor, you'll notice on the left-hand side that we have some palettes. And the first tab on this palette here has our parameters. The second one has actions. And those are the two things which we're going to have a look at in this video. For every command that we put into the block in order to make it dynamic, we need a parameter. And we need at least one action associated to that parameter. I'm going to start off with something quite simple, and that will be to make the, string, the sink stretchable. So in order to do that, I will need the linear parameter. I'll select that parameter and right-click and change the grip display to 1. It leaves me with a single arrow here, which is the arrow I'll use for stretching. So that's the parameter taken care of. Now onto the action. I'll need the stretch action. The best thing to do with all of these is to constantly keep your eye out on the command line at the bottom to see what AutoCAD's prompting you for. It's not worth committing all of these things to memory, so simply act as the prompts come up from AutoCAD. So it says there to select the parameter, I'll select this one. Specify the parameter point to associate with the action. I'll choose the arrow. It then asks me to specify a stretch frame. That stretch frame is going to do something like that. Anything included within that, that, that frame will stretch along with your stretch action. It then prompts me to select the objects. I'll just do a normal right to left select as you would do for selecting with the normal stretch command. And I'll then enter. Close and save. And there's my block, which is now stretchable. Open the block editor again. I'm going to get rid of these commands. And we'll start again. This time, what I'd like to do is make the sink stretchable and also flippable, left to right. I'll put down my linear parameter again. This time, I'm also going to use the flip parameter. Ask me to specify the reflection line. The so two parameters down, the little exclamations just alert you to the fact that no actions have yet been associated with them. So into the actions. Let's do the stretch first. Select the parameter. Choose the point. Stretch frame and select objects. Next, the flip state needs the flip action. Select the parameter, select objects, which will just be everything, and enter. Close and save. So my block now is able to be stretched, and I can also 
flip it as well, turning it from a left to a right hand. So those are the basic principles of creating a dynamic block. Make sure that you put in a suitable parameter. Make sure that you associate an action with that parameter. So I hope that's helpful as an introduction to using dynamic blocks, which I'm sure will be very helpful in making you more productive with AutoCAD.